So, um, yeah, I'm Jackie. I've lived experience of mental distress. I'm part of the COVID reduction group at the Loneliness and Isolation Network. And I also uh, work as a peer involvement work and mental health charity. So I've done lots, uh, and I've worked as an engagement manager. So I've done lots of different work in making sure I engage with a variety of different people. Um, so I should just go. Moving. So either either click on the slide or there might be arrows in the bottom left. Let's see. Let's see if my mouse is gonna work. <laughs> right. Oh. Yeah, yeah. well done. <laughs> yeah, I probably can't see everything. Um so what is public and patient involvement? So the National Institute for Health Research kind of defines this as research carried out by members of the public um, about and for them, and this includes working research um, funders, advising, so it might be members of a steering group, um, it might be again in this case sort of working on applications. And what I mean by public is include patients, potential patients, carers, and people who use uh, health and social care services as well as people from organisations that represent people who use services therefore can be in this case people with lived experience of mental distress which i'll later go on to talk a bit more about in this funding call and there is a link at the bottom to their website which has got lots of useful information right uh, so some best practice is important to properly budget in your application so again this particular thing is making sure that you put in enough money for the sort of ppi um, so it can happen throughout all the stages of the application. So you know, the people can actually help you write the application and, um, and then be work with you throughout the stages if it's successful. And then ongoing contact through meetings um, and making sure that people's involvement is valuable, me meaningful or not antagonistic. But it's key to sort of communicate kind of throughout. And again, I've given a couple of websites there where you can find some useful information around uh, some top tips around involving people. Um, so again, you've got the National Institute of Health Research. Um, I've got some really useful guidance. You've got the National, um, you've got Ensign, and you've also got Evolve, which is, which is a charity as well. And the other key thing is around sort of terminology. Um, a lot of people might be in an academic world and understand all the terminology, but as people come with lived experience may not. So it's good to make sure you try and keep that simple. Having a jargon buster is often good. And then value and ask. So it's like often people say, how should we best involve you? Well, actually ask us, how can we best involve you? Um, you know, how best can we work for you to make this meaningful and then and it work for you? So how can someone with experience of PPI help your application study? So we can discuss and share good practice around PPI in relation to funding application. We can work in co-production uh, with us and with others. Uh, we can become a co-applicant. And if your application is successful, then work in co-production with you throughout the study period. And link you again within kind of our, you know, PPI networks and, uh, you know, signpost you onto different people or again, engage with other sort of groups because a lot of us are very much linked in with the, uh, you know, with people with lived experience and peer support. So how can you find patient public involvement to co-produce with? Um, so NSAM, the National Service User Network, produce a weekly bulletin. You can advertise in there. It's all, you can advertise for free. Again, there's the contact details to email if you want to do that. And that book bulletin goes out weekly. And lots of people with lived experience um, site receive that. So. Um, that's another good way of linking in. Social media, Twitter and Facebook are good places. Um, targeted emails, so again, you can do targeted emails to say mental health organisation, charities or groups. And again, talking to your university colleagues, because again, I'm sure if they've had PPI, they might have a database or they might have, uh, be able to give you advice, but again, making sure you're following uh, GDPR data protection. And then um, public and pay, public, uh, patient and public involvement leads, so local authorities and clinical commission groups usually have leads. So again, if you was looking to work in certain regions, it's good to go to your local authority or clinical commission group and ask about these leads. And then they can link you in with lots of groups and networks. 
and the same as kind of health watch i mean you've got national health watch but each every single local area has its own health watch and they produce a um a regular bulletin and have a database and are, and are really usually very helpful about kind of promoting um again and that and that can help you to have that regional thing and it might be certain groups of people you want to sort of work with because health watch work with so many different groups so that, that they're um, another good one to kind of link in with and kind of the sort of gold sort of standards i would say of involvement are um so ensigns 4pi involvement standards they were developed with lived, with lived experience as part of a national uh, involvement partnership and um i'll try and do now a quick kind of run through so you've got the different areas principal purpose presence process and impact and i'll do a quick whistle stop tour of something that i did when i was involving people so um ex i work say at a national mental health charity and i was setting up a co-production mm -hmm. advisory group around kind of pan disability and this was around making our peer support materials and training more accessible along with opening up to a, a diverse group of people in order that they could become peer supporters at our organisation. So the principles the key here is making sure you respect and have equality in, peer, in working relationships that work that everyone has shared principles and values. I always say in my case like working with peers, peer in Latin means equal. So it's trying to and I'm trying to create, I think, with researchers as well, that we're all kind of equal uh, together. And when I was setting up the co-production group, I did a, an expression of interest. So that's quite good to do, kind of do a call out. So you're making it clear in that uh, what you're looking for and uh, you're conveying the principles and kind of values as well. So purpose in the expression of interest call out, be clear, you know, again, if it's people with lived experience of mental distress or other areas, uh, what skills and abilities maybe you're looking for for people to actually bring. And presence as an organisation, um, we have people say with lived experience and mental distress one our trustees and we involve people across our organization so um, we really have a presence within our organization and again anything you're doing it's making sure you are valuing and making sure people have a presence process i created a promotional poster and the expression of interest was shared widely throughout it was an internal thing so it was shared widely for our organization through different channels a service user database staff services peer support coordinators and we have peer supporters and through networks and again making sure that anything is sort of accessible so uh, a lot of people their expression of interest but i actually phoned people and i took them over the phone because again accessibility is key um, you know because sometimes you, what can happen is you can actually stop a lot of people being able to be involved if you're not making things accessible for them um, so people kind of were interviewed over the phone and then once they were selected an, an induction took place and we worked together and again I looked at all their access needs so I was aware of those that they could work with people in the way that was going to work for them and different opportunities and involvement were shared and regular communications and updates um, so it was ongoing throughout the whole process and impact uh, I think this is the key part, you know, organisations often get this bit wrong because service users and carers always require and value regular feedback and especially like to know the impact their involvement on the project or study has made. And this can really frustrate people, so I'd say this is a key thing. Uh, therefore, I regularly made sure I gave the group updates and said what they had kind of achieved. And for example, at the end, you know, they'd achieved guidance around making a, a peer support accessible, they'd produced lots of assessment documents and made it clear throughout that without their help and expertise we could not achieve the outputs and outcomes we did. So thanking people. Internally within the organisation we shared their impact and learning more widely in an in a organisational bulletin that goes out to everybody and also through email and through the internet. Um, so on there, again, you've got um, details on an earlier slide to NSUM, because they're sort of four PR standards. Um, so I think that's a good thing if you're looking to do this application to kind of incorporate the, the standards and look at that approach to doing uh, patient and public involvement. 
Well, thank you for listening. And I think the questions might be in the chat and they might be at the end, I believe, Ellie, after we come out back from the breakout room. So.